Learning how to make 3D environments is hard, very hard. So today we're gonna learn exactly how it's done. Our good friend Stefan is going to show us how he makes beautiful environments from simple modeling to sculpting in ZBrush and a unique way and fun way to create vegetation and then how to throw it all together in the powerful Unreal Engine. Now, speaking of Unreal Engine, if you want to learn how to create beautiful environments in Unreal, check out my brand new environment art course called the Environment Artist Survival Kit, where you're going to learn everything from making flowing grass to fluffy trees and sweeping landscapes. You guys crashed the sales page on the first day and I've been completely overwhelmed by all of your support. I cannot thank you guys enough. All 13 hours of content are only $49 forever, so make sure to grab it when you can. I'll leave a link into the description for the course. Now, let's get into the video. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hi everyone, my name is Stefan and I'm an environment artist. This is my smoothie diorama about which I'll talk a bit today. My goals for this project were to build something with a lower scope, so didn't want to build just a huge environment, so I thought about a diorama. Further, I wanted uh, to improve my texturing skills and maybe add something cool to my portfolio. In the beginning I didn't know yet that I wanted to do a smithy, just a diorama with a low scope. So I just browsed through ArtStation and Pinterest and found uh, the pixel artist MooPixel who made this cool pixel uh, art uh, smithy and I liked it so much that I took that as an inspiration instead of just a concept of something I could work off from and decided to just uh, search for references, real life references of uh, smithies. When all my reference gathering was done I started with my block art, just a really uh, early stage and uh, just got feedback uh, from others in communities and uh, decided to add a little bit more materials to it, so that's how the wood came into it. Then, uh, after even more feedback, always just ask for feedback, change stuff, iterate and until you're happy and it looks cool. Um, after that, uh, I thought, okay, just the interior is a, a bit too less, so I decided to make an, a small exterior as well. When I was happy with my layout in 3D Max, I decided to uh, make not a new block out in uh, Unreal Engine, but uh, to just get some a uh, older assets I already had, or just grab some free assets uh, from uh, some stores, and uh, well, kind of build uh, the environment in Unreal with those assets, just to get a better feel of how everything could look like with uh, colors and textures. I also did a, a lighting block out in this uh, scene just to get even more uh, the feeling of how it could look like in the end. In this phase everything still does not look that good as you can see, especially the exterior ground texture is really horrible. But well, it's alright, Just uh, it was just to get uh, a better feeling for it, so I just kept it didn't bother too much, so yeah. After that phase, I uh, just okay had an idea. Okay, that's what I wanted about to look like. Those uh, things will be there. The lighting will be like this. I need a uh, a tree which I can duplicate and just make scale a bit smaller. And I had my plan. Had an asset list uh, which models I want to do and what uh, kind of textures I need. So I started my asset creation and started uh, step by step to replace everything. Here you can see I imported some uh, new wood parts. The wood stash uh, stash is new. Um, I also okay decided that the green of the grass was just too bright, even if it was just uh, for block out. So I toned it down a bit. Um, then I imported my grass after it was done, as you can see here already had uh, also made some barrels and some other stuff's already done in here. The uh, plaster material, tiling texture on the walls is already also done in this one, but everything is still uh, pretty dark and the lighting is not there yet. Here I just added some ferns and the trees, which already gave it a, a bit better look. 
And this is how the scene ended up in the end. And it's just uh, everything was imported now, and um, I did the lighting and had a just a small uh, post process uh, pass on it. And yeah. Now that you saw the progress of my smithy and how I approached some of the stuff, uh, I'd like to show you how I created my tiling uh, brick texture. Then I'd like to go a bit over um, how I created my foliage and uh, maybe just briefly go over my master materials uh, in Unreal. So the way I created my brick wall texture was a little bit uh, back and forth between 3D Max and ZBrush and later on a uh, Substance Designer. But for all the modeling part, you, I probably uh, could have done it just in ZBrush, but I just felt a bit more comfortable for a few steps in Max, so, in Max, so that's why I did it in Max. First of all, I uh, am in Max. I just start creating some basic boxes, whatever I want, just scaling them and giving them a nice uh, edge bevel or chamfer in this case in Max. And this I do with like just a few bricks. I create really simple shapes just to get in my head, okay, those uh, kind of sizes I want uh, in the end to have. Just do whatever you want. You could also just take one beveled uh, brick here and then go from uh, duplicate this one in uh, ZBrush and just work from one. But I like to do, do it that way just to have uh, an idea in my in my head what I want to do. So to get this into uh, ZBrush I like to try and uh, give it an even topology. You don't have to care too much about the edges but it's fine if it's about like this doesn't have to be perfect, every square doesn't have to be the same, exact same size, but just about the same size, just to make uh, the um, subdividing in ZBrush a bit easier for yourself, and or for the mesh, to have an even resolution, to ensure an even uh, resolution. Yeah, and those uh, bricks I just import into ZBrush and start uh, sculpting them using the move brush, the uh, trim dynamic with a, a square alpha or just whatever brush you want to uh, create the, I'd say, well not high poly of the bricks, but I, rough, I usually go about to uh, roughly a 50k uh, uh, tries or polygons uh, per brick and then I import them back into Max and start uh, to do the tiling for it, which I'll just do with those bricks now, just for the sake of this video. Um, yeah, so let's put those to the side and take a plane, make it square. And it's good that you have uh, some sections here now, because uh, I like to use those points for snapping. And Maybe you, you've already seen this, so if you've seen this, just feel free to, if you know this trick, how to create tiling bricks, uh, textures, just feel, uh, feel free to skip ahead. Okay, for those who do not know this, it's actually quite simple, so I'll just do it quick. Um, you take your brick, snap it to the corner, and then you start uh, snapping the same brick to every corner, because that's what uh, ensures... Uh, that is tiling. If you now want to move the brick, you don't want them to be exactly in the middle of uh, the 
the brick one you don't want the middle of the brick to be at the exactly at the corners of uh, your plane or your texture you now can just take them all and move them together always just remember to move them together <coughs> so you have to do the same for the upper part and the up up and down and uh, left and right like just uh, taking that snapping it to this uh, vertex so that's why I uh, think it's important to have those sections here to have those vertices where you can snap to and then I just snap down here select both and move them how I want to so there are two ways I think you could approach this you could either just uh, start with um, doing first the the sides of it so also going like okay I want this one here so you need one here as well and then if you want you can just move them or even move them upwards here um, but I don't like to start with the sides I personally like uh, to do the bottom part first at least for a brick wall for a brick wall I like to do the bottom part first on the up part <clears throat> and uh, from there I just like to build it like a real brick wall because that gives you some some uh, randomness to it and not like ah okay I already have this uh, uh, I already decided this that um, one row of bricks will be starting here but I don't know I just it's a uh, my thing, I just uh, like to do it that way better. So yeah, if you just, if you finish this and uh, filled everything out, you don't have to uh, do the tiling trick in the middle part of it. You just can start placing your stuff, your bricks, uh, here, uh, however you want. Um, and yeah, and as soon as you've done that, you can export everything into or import everything into ZBrush. Oh, one thing, um, what I liked to do was, uh, for my texture at least, you do not have to do this, but um, I liked, uh, I took this plane and, oh, those are a bit thick maybe, like this, I don't know, it doesn't matter actually. Um, I took this plane and moved it up here a bit just to have something uh, for the grout, grout to work with them. Um, yeah, and I'll show you what I mean in ZBrush and how you set up a new ZBrush file to ensure that the tiling is still working. Okay, if everything is imported uh, into ZBrush, I just make this quick. Um, one important thing you have to do is uh, first you create a plane or import a, a plane which uh, is behind your brick wall. This will be your camera plane um, on which you will focus if you want to work or just bake out. You don't have to work with focus on this plane but if you want to bake out your textures you have to focus on this. Like uh, your document has to be a square shape then you just go in front mode and click your camera plane press F to focus sometimes it takes a, to tap a F twice and now your uh, brick wall should be tiling if you made everything correct. Now if you want to uh, make a brush stroke like okay with just with this you'll see that it won't uh, go over here so it does, uh, it'd be a pain to just try and uh, do it like this so what you have to activate is uh, the wrap mode I put it here but uh, to uh, have a quick uh, access to it but uh, you can find it under brush, curve, and just here wrap mode. And uh, just uh, put it to 1. Then it should be tiling, hopefully. So now that it's uh, at 1, the stroke should come at this side. Yeah. And uh, you have to do this with uh, every brush you use. So if I go to my trim dynamic, you see uh, the wrap mode is at 0 again, so it won't do anything. And just put it to. Uh, one again and yeah the same is for your smooth just uh, 
do this uh, also for, for just for every brush you use. Uh, yeah, and start sculpting your bricks. Another thing what I wanted to say is uh, I said that I put this uh, plane here for the grout, and all I did with this was just subdivide it a few times and just start uh, pulling out with either uh, my standard brush, just pulling it out like this, just really, uh, just like that. Do whatever you want, getting get it out like this. And yeah, that's how I approached uh, my brick wall. And for baking, I uh, just put the flat color on it and flat color material texture grab dock and export and now you could uh, use this as a mask in substance designer next thing uh, i'd like to talk about is uh, foliage so for foliage i'm uh, back in zbrush and i often just start it with a sphere for sculpting my high poly. Do, do, do. Edit and make polymesh 3D. I usually just uh, dynamesh, it, dynamesh it right away. Could make a lower resolution. Uh, maybe a bit too low. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. I think. Um. When sculpting, I like to switch between my materials, so that's why I have uh, different materials here, like matcap, basic, just gives you different highlights, and that's the reason I use different materials uh, when I sculpt. So, for what I did, I did um, in foliage, I did a, a leaf, a long leaf for my uh, for fern, not classic fern, just a fern with just long leaves and. Nothing really special. I'll show you how I start, and then I'll jump uh, jump to my finished product. So I often or usually just start with this VM and start dragging out the geometry where I want it to be. It's really just uh, really rough and just pulling geometry wherever I want to. Sometimes just adjusting it. Dynameshing with trim dynamic, giving it a little bit more shape. You could do this uh, with symmetry, but I usually don't do it, so feel free to do it. Could be beneficial. I'll speed this up just uh, so that you don't have to watch a, I don't know, too long tutorial <laughs> or breakdown. So to create um, a more like leaf shape, I uh, take the standard brush and just try to do a stroke down here. You also could use uh, lazy mouse or I think shift, but to make a straight line. But I'm just doing like this. <laughs> I don't know why. Just doing like this. I don't know. Okay, it's not shift. I'm not sure which button it is. So yeah. And then I just go in with my trim dynamic, and it's often just back and forth, working on it, adding stuff, destroying the stuff you just did, <laughs> adding it back in, and slowly just get the shape you want. I'm probably also 
not the fastest sculptor since I do not have that much experience in it. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> So what I ended up with for my fern leaf is what you can see here. Um, I added some color. If you don't know how to do this, it's just uh, select your color here, whatever color you want, like red. You can see it here. Um, you need to have a color here, like this. It has to be uh, checked. I see. Um, you could just no uh, Z add and press on RGB and then you just start painting it's like vertex painting so the more uh, the higher you, the, the, resu the resolution of your mesh is uh, the cleaner what you paint will be how I go about this is uh, usually just uh, do the main shape of the leaf um, just okay let's see okay just so I want this uh, base color and then say fill object and now everything is the same color and you can see this if you use the flat color material it's everything the same and so I like uh, using uh, the skin shade 4 because it's quite similar to the color of flat color but still gives you some uh, 3d information some shading and from here on I just uh, take different colors and lower the intensity and just start painting on it don't have to be too precise for your base color since uh, most of the information will come from your other textures um, try to do like a gradient if you wanna and whatever just do some color variation in it Put, put some col color variation in it and leaves usually have some like I'd say sc well, scratches it's scratches for which I just take a light color use Z sub with kinda low intensity and then I start cutting in well maybe the intensity of RPG is too high it's too low and yeah, here you can see it, so there now is a bit more normal information. And you have also color information. Here. So that's what I like to do for some stuff like this. If you have, uh, like, okay, uh, my leaf is a bit dry here, so you could take a brownish color. And I often use a mallet fast brush. I like this that one with RGB and uh, sub together and then just uh, higher making it look like it's uh, dry there and then you can take a lighter color lower the intensity quite a bit and then or you go like this uh, so, something like this. That's how you could approach this. Not not perfect, obviously. So this would need some more work. But yeah. So that's how I sculpt my foliage, and then I well <laughs> put everything into a card. It's a bit broken now. I'll just uh, show you how it looks like, and then how you can put um, your foliage together in your modeling program. Okay, so in Max, I just created a plane and got my texture and put it on, onto the material with a opacity and two sided checked. I dragged this onto my plane and now I have this. That's uh, the texture for my ferns. And from here, you just can use cut and start cutting these out doesn't have to be perfect at first um, just cut them out
if everything is uh, cut uh, into a separate piece, just get the face and use detach. And now, if you want to further improve how you cut cut it, which you should uh, do, keep in mind that you have or should activate a preserve UVs so that you can easily uh, move your vertices here, connect them. Instead, if you do not have this activated it will just destroy your UVs or stretch it so check preserve UVs and from here you can give your leaves a bit of a more three-dimensional shape maybe like this do it quick now. Um, what you want to do, oh, uh, and actually you shouldn't, often it looks a bit better if you move your vertices down, if you have then a preserve UVs uh, deselected, kind of just feels better, I don't know. Um, yeah, but stuff like this here, like this vertice, you could easily just put it a bit closer here, or even decide, okay, um, that's a bit hard, so I just cut one more time here and drag it out like this, because um, opacity is more expensive than polygons, so just that if you just have a, like a two more tries or four more tries, it doesn't matter really. Yeah, so if you have this, you can then could this give this here a bend as well. Uh, uh, really simple, just like this. Just like that. And from here... You can just start by building your fern or your foliage you want to. Yeah, let's say this is our great fern <laughs> for now. Um, I collapse them to one mesh. And what you want to do is uh, correct the Vertex normals, I think it is. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah. So, if you look at... You can go to... Mm -hmm. You can see those are the vertex normals of your mesh. And what you want is uh, not for them to go like in whatever direction they want to. So in Max, I use a uh, normal thief. Other modeling programs probably have uh, their own stuff. I, I know Maya does, and Blender probably as well. You just uh, in Max, you take a plane or um, in for Fern. I'm not sure. Sometimes I use a plane, but. Uh, you could also just use a sphere to steal the normals from that sphere. That's how you, so the higher the, the the higher the resolution, the better it works. I think at least it, for me it works better with the higher resolution mesh I can steal from. Just taking ham sphere. Covering my mesh and 
both uh, have to be an editable mesh, in Max at least. And now, hopefully, well, not quite what I expected, but you get the idea. They should um, actually just point into the same direction as uh, the normals of this mesh. So that's what I wanted to get. Don't know, I didn't get it right now but this is what you should get <laughs> so I <laughs> just leave it like this uh, at this now for just for the sake of the length of this video it's probably already way already way too long so yeah okay next uh, would be unreal and just a quick overview of my master materials how I set them up so this is my <coughs> master material for my unique textures. Um, it's fairly simple. I'll just uh, show you what I do for my base color and my normal. So for my base color I just like to uh, do a blend overlay with a base color tint. So if I want uh, an object to have or with uh, different instances uh, and the same object having uh, different colors. That's what I can do here. Exposing it, uh, the color as a parameter. It would work better if my base color would be just uh, gray values. So you could do this with a desaturation node somewhere in here. But I didn't do it for this one. I don't know why, I just didn't do it. Here you can uh, set the tint strength. So you choose the color and then say, okay, I want it to be tinted as the original, so you have it at zero, and if you want it uh, to be tinted at like a maximum color, put it at one. This uh, multiplies just for the color lightness, so if I uh, want my color to be a bit, a bit lighter, just to increase this value or decrease for darker. And a power node is uh, nice if you want more contrast in your texture. So I often uh, increase uh, my contrast in engine and then sometimes just uh, still use the base color uh, lightness to lighten it up again a bit. Um, yeah, I up here I have a, a second UV channel, but that's not too important right now. And for my Everything else is just uh, plugged in, I think, here. yeah, here's uh, my emissive, I have one uh, object with, uh, which uses an emissive texture, texture, so I've got this one here, like an emissive on-off, simple parameter, zero is off and one is on. And yeah, for my normal, I just added a quick normal uh, uh, strength, just masked out the red and green channel. Then same like with the lightness uh, multiply here. It's actually just just the same, just for the red and green channel. And then I append the blue channel back in. That's an easy way to build yourself a normal strength. So yeah, that's uh, that wraps it up. I think some other stuff I uh, could show you like when I start building this. What I like to do with uh, foliage is uh, having, well, let's see, if I have a fern, like, let's say, uh, uh, let's say this one, I like not just having one fern often, um, I like to put a smaller fern next to it, just to have your Always just have a uh, big shapes, medium shapes, shapes, and uh, small shapes. It's the same uh, for the rocks. I, what I did, so you could say that the whole thing is a, a big shape, but you can also say like, okay, so this rock is a, a big shape. Those are like 
medium shape those two and this one is a small shape and here are small shapes as well and just clutter, clutter it like this always have a big shape then a few uh, medium shapes surrounding those and the medium shapes are getting surrounded by your uh, smaller shapes like here that's my big shape then I have technically you could say all of this is my medium shape and then it's uh, divided into smaller shapes like this so yeah that's a small trick I, I'd say uh, for uh, placing assets same with grass uh, I like f uh, to fade it out if you could say like this like have a big shape grass, bu grass bundle clump in the middle of it uh, of uh, my scene or like yeah and fade it out to the path so another th uh, thing that is very important if you place assets is that you not just for placing assets but also for building your assets so you should plan that uh, from the beginning and check all the time while uh, creating your scene is the player perspective so if you get a bit closer here you can see that those hammers or tools in general are a big uh, a bit too uh, big for reality but since it's uh, not just because it's stylized also but, uh, because uh, I chose that this could be a top-down game I just made those tools a bit bigger to be better visible and gave everything a bit more of a bevel uh, on the edges to catch the light better so that's uh, something that you should always consider consider for asset placement for asset creation what is your uh, player perspective same with trees they look kinda nice from this angle that it could be I didn't check could be that they look like I don't know not that great from this angle but since uh, the player perspective is like from above it's important that they look good from this angle so that's about it um, thanks for watching hope you liked it and learned something um, one last thing if you want to progress a bit faster um, I think it's a great idea to join communities art communities uh, I for ex uh, myself for example uh, I joined um, the dynasty and the experience points communities on discord and I often uh, ask for feedback for this scene in those uh, communities so it's important to get feedback join communities <laughs> okay uh, have a nice day thanks